Three infants have been brought to your clinic. One has a mild fever, one has diarrhea, and one is malnourished. All three need vaccinations. Which infants can you safely vaccinate? In fact, all three infants can be safely vaccinated. Many healthcare workers do not like vaccinating an infant who is ill, but delaying immunization puts them at risk of vaccine-preventable diseases when they could receive the protection safely. With a few exceptions, infants should be vaccinated whenever possible. How do you determine whether it is safe to vaccinate an infant? To begin, assess the infant. For the first dose of a vaccine, assess the general status of the child to rule out any signs of serious illness. For a subsequent dose in a vaccine series, ask the caregiver whether any adverse events occurred after the previous dose, such as anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction. There are very few instances when you should not immunize the infant. First, do not give a vaccine if the infant did have anaphylaxis or other severe reaction to a previous dose of the vaccine or a vaccine component. Also, do not give a vaccine if the caregiver objects to immunization for a sick infant. Explain that mild illness is not a contraindication. But if the caregiver still objects, ask her to come back when the infant is well. In addition, there are a few instances when you should not vaccinate HIV-infected children. Say you have a child who is HIV positive but asymptomatic. Which of these vaccines would be safe to deliver? In fact, they are all safe except BCG. BCG is the only vaccine on this list that is not safe for asymptomatic HIV-positive children. Also, HPV always requires three doses for children with a compromised immune system or who are HIV-infected. A three-dose schedule at zero, one or two, and six months is recommended. What if a child has symptomatic HIV infection or AIDS? Do you know which three of these vaccines are not safe to deliver? If a child has symptomatic HIV infection or AIDS, do not give BCG, vaccines containing measles, mumps, and rubella, or yellow fever. We just looked at situations where you would not vaccinate. But what if the child is ill? For infants with a minor illness or fever below 38.5 degrees Celsius, vaccinate as usual. This includes respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, and similar mild infections without significant fever. You may need to assure the caregiver that mild illness is not a contraindication. Some infants may be very ill. They may have a very high fever or need to go to the hospital. In each case, ask a senior health worker to decide, but vaccinate if possible. Infants need protection from diseases that could be transmissible in a hospital, such as measles. What if an infant is malnourished? Malnourished infants should be vaccinated as usual. These infants do develop immunity after vaccination, and when they do not receive vaccines, they are more likely than well-nourished children to die from vaccine-preventable diseases. Let us look at other situations that are not contraindications when you should vaccinate. Infants should be immunized if they have asthma or allergies, except an allergic reaction to the vaccine, ongoing treatment with antibiotics, family history of adverse events following immunization, family history of convulsions, seizures, or fits, prematurity or low birth weight, history of jaundice at birth, ongoing breastfeeding, recent or upcoming surgery, chronic non-communicable diseases of the heart, lung, kidney or liver, and stable neurological conditions such as cerebral palsy or Down's syndrome. Now you know how to assess possible contraindications for vaccination. 
Remember these few situations when not to vaccinate and when to consult a senior health worker. Keep in mind that delaying immunization puts the infant at risk of vaccine-preventable diseases. So if it is safe to immunize, it is best to do so.